Okay, let me show you really quickly a little bit of the editing that I do in the computer to prep all of the still images for the stop motion animation. There's a little bit of um, doctoring that happens in the computer, covering up some of the mistakes, and prepping the images so that the contrast is... is um, I can't think of the word. Let's just uh, jump in the computer. All right, so here's my desktop, and you'll see right here, I've got a bunch of still images that I just took today. And these are in sequence. It's the animation happening uh, frame by frame. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open all of them in Photoshop. You can actually kind of get a sense for the animation as you watch the files open in Photoshop. They are upside down, but we're gonna fix that as well. Part of the appeal of stop motion animation is that it's not perfectly smooth. It, it doesn't have that crisp, modern, um, computer-generated graphics smoothness to it. I remember watching some making of features on the Corpse Bride. They said that with the advent of computer technology that was much more pervasive than when they had done the previous film, which was Nightmare Before Christmas, they could make it so smooth and perfect that it would look like CG. And so they intentionally had to make it rougher to maintain that stop motion animation look. I've got all the images open and what I've done is I've actually saved um, a macro. They don't call it a macro, I think they call it an action. This allows you to do a set of actions on an image without having to go through every individual menu and click it and do it every time. So I've already saved one of these and all I do is, it's right here, it's under story, it's this threshold macro and I just play it. Every pixel has been forced to either be white or black. So now all the images have had that, that uh, macro uh, set of adjustments done to them. Uh, I'm gonna open that folder again. And now you can see any of one of these images, if I open it, it has that, that adjustment where there is no, there's no grays, there's no colors. It's either a black pixel or a white pixel. And now we're gonna do a little bit of doctoring. I'm gonna look for any stray pixels that I wanna erase. I'm not gonna go over the overboard on this when it's animated and it's moving uh, rather quickly you're not going to see a lot of those details. So I'm going to look for, for big things that I need to fix, not the little things. Try to at least. Okay, so all I'm doing is basically painting white or black. That's all I'm doing to fix any areas I see. In fact, right now I see an area up here. If you see this area here, I, what I want to do is erase all the white and just conform to this line, the black. And all we do in order to fill them with black is use this pencil tool, I'll adjust the size of the tool a little bit, make it a little bigger, make it quicker, and just go in and fill that in, like so. Now there's also some areas out here that need to be filled in. Um, I can do the bucket tool, or just go over quickly like so, but I want all of that to be solid black. One other thing I forgot to do, um, I usually will duplicate this folder that has all the images in it, so I have a set of originals. I forgot to do it before I did the threshold adjustment, but that's okay. I will just, so this, this copy I will at least just drop back into this folder, so I've got that copy. In case I do something that I want to reverse later, let's fill in a couple of the little deep stray details. Ooh, okay, so let me see the problem here is when I hit the fill, there was a gap in the white down here somewhere down towards the, the bottom. So let's um, go back to the pencil tool, we'll make it a little bit smaller and just make sure that doesn't have a gap. Now if I do it, perfect. Another advantage to the way that I'm putting the animation together is that it's easy to fix individual frames later. Since the frames are all gonna be preserved, I can go back, fix that one little thing, go back into my editing software and it'll be fixed instantly. So let's go ahead and put the animation together in DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is gonna see all of those individual frames as one sequence. 
because the camera gives them a sequential number. And we're going to pull in that sequence of images. If we go into the folder, you'll see here it's actually just one file. It's, it's putting them together, which is fine. Now, I didn't flip them over in Photoshop, which I could have done, but it'll actually be easier just to flip it in here because it's one flip. Because my computer's a little underpowered, DaVinci Resolve is going to struggle to show us the animation in real time. It's actually easier to have DaVinci Resolve render it out and then watch it. All right, it's all done, so let's watch it. Here we go. Not bad, not bad. I can see some issues that I wish I would have fixed. The cross kind of tilts weird right there, but I think I can live with that. There's some big issues like right there. You can see the white that I forgot to erase, so I'll go back and fix that frame. And some of the white above the cross where I had a piece of tape, I'll go in frame by frame and erase those because they're distracting unnecessarily. There's the basic process I'm going through for each of the sequences in this animation. Thanks for watching.